Do you think you're ready to dominate the pitch like never before? Well, get ready to unlock the secrets of this dominating 4 3 1 2 tactic. I'm about to unveil the tactical masterpiece that took my team from contenders to dominators, boasting a staggering 91% win rate. Say hello to the Red Bull heavily inspired tactic. Today, we'll pull back the curtain on every aspect of the team instructions, understanding just why this tactic was able to dominate. From high pressing madness to light in fast counter attacks we'll walk you through each step to tactical greatness so don't miss out on this opportunity to elevate your game and dominate your opponents as always i'm raring to go so if you are too mm, <laughs> let's go So I may have to take you on a mini tactical journey. Back in October, I did do my own tactical analysis on RB Salzburg versus Benfica. And this is what inspired my 4-3-1-2 tactic in Football Manager. If you want to read the whole report, the link will be in the description below, of course. But there is a reason why I am very proud of this. And that is because RB Salzburg themselves did like this analysis. I did get a couple of their coaches as well following me on LinkedIn. So that's a plus i guess the analysis was okay but we will be using the analysis to unbreak um, down the football manager tactic as well so the reason why i did use the 4 3 one, two formation in football manager was because of course rb salzburg used that formation in real life i've got the little arrows as well to kind of show you the sort of movements those players were making in this formation and of course you can see there's a heavy presence in the center of the pitch within the system when they were trying to build up they had two very noticeable patterns so the first pass is to the center back so the goalkeeper will look for the center back the center back will look for his other center back and then it will go to a fullback a fullback will then move the ball back into central midfield and then the central midfield can progress to either one of the strikers or the central attacking midfielder or you can pass it back to retain possession so often they will look to go wide from the center back but then look to play inside always looking to go out then in once rb salzburg do get through that first line of pressure then there is that vertical progression they look to progress through teams by the use of vertical progression which involves quick combinations and the fullbacks wide stretching the opposition shape allowing for roaming movements in central areas to receive centrally always looking for the interior player when the ball is worked out wide to the fullbacks when salzburg were able to flow the quick one touch passing combinations was a joy to watch it is important for the opposition to anticipate passes or they could be done for but this can also lead into turnover in possession if not executed well despite always mentioning the central progression the fullbacks are very important because they give the team that constant width this is natural given the system only has one wide player on each flank the interior patterns will then provide them with support in possession so if the left back gets the ball the left side of the central midfielder will move away from that half space to kind of support that left back both fullbacks do have attacking instincts but there is a trigger for their forward runs both fullbacks will stay deep during the first phase of build-up and then will begin their penetrating runs as Salzburg then approach the third phase and throughout all of this both strikers will just operate on the defense line always both center forwards are ready to pull wide and stretch the opposition's back line it's extremely dangerous for the opposition's back line as both strikers on the day Rocco Simic and Konate both possess great speed and movement through balls down the channels can be dangerous for the opposition team so due to this pace up front they will look for passes in behind the opposition's back line which is exactly what we are going to look to do in football manager as well pacey strikers are going to be important Salzburg do complete the most passes on average per game in the Austrian Bundesliga kind of showing the importance of those through balls in this system Salzburg are a brave team in possession they try to play direct passes don't get it confused with longer passes it is just forward passes they like to counter press when possession is turned over and they like the game to be played at a very high tempo mentioning transitions they will look to counter attack after winning possession salzburg break with devastating speed with players always looking to carry the ball directly into the space on the break upon losing the ball though salzburg can be caught cool in defensive transition which was sort of a weakness for us in football manager as well of course not that big of an issue the shape can be slightly unorganized after losing the ball the natural attacking instincts allow them to roam from their positions but sometimes not in good positions for recovery after losing the ball the team possesses good recovery pace but sometimes it can be a bit too late and the opposition may find their way into good attacking transitions but 
this is where Salzburg fall into their defensive shape a little bit as well. Aggressively, they will be in a high press. Well, the high press is aggressive, I should say. Relentlessly pressing and breaking from their defensive position to press the man on the ball. Often giving away fouls deep in the opposition, um, deep in the opposition's half due to their aggressive manner. So there is a little bit of some tactical fouls in there as well that I did notice from RB Salzburg. Salzburg did collapse into a 4-1-3-2 block when the opposition did have lengthy spells with possession. So the central midfielder will should drop deep into the anchor role and then the number 10 will slot back down in between the two central midfielders. So those are the things that I'm trying to take away from the RB Salzburg tactic to then implement into my football manager tactic. Looking at the strengths of the RB Salzburg system, the speed on counter attacks and creating scoring chances from those counter attacks was amazing. Energy and tempo, they operate with high energy, high tempo, and there is an effective high pressing trap as well. But the weakness, sometimes it can be the ball retention. Frequent turnovers when attempting to progress with speed. The left back got caught isolated in two versus one situations when defending of course being the only defender on the flanks and sometimes they were wasteful in those wide attacking areas with their crossing situations don't forget you can read this in full the link will be in the description below but now we are going to go into football manager to recreate my recreation <laughs> So what we are going to do is recreate this tactic. The only reason why I want to do it this way is so I can explain every single team instruction that I am using and what is actually doing in my tactic. Again, hopefully some of you people can then take some hints tips <laughs> away from what I'm saying and implement it either in your tactic or you can use this tactic and then you have an understanding, a better understanding of why things are working in the match engine. And first off, we can start with the mentality, positive. Mentality in game is all about risk. So maybe ignore the attacking, very attacking and just kind of in your head, have it as very risky or risky. So someone on attacking will be risky. Someone on very attacking will be very risky and someone on positive can be fairly risky, I guess. And that risk affects everything. Attacking width, the higher the mentality, the wider you will play. For passing directness, the higher higher the mentality, the more riskier and the more direct your passes will be. And with the tempo as well, the more quicker your team will operate. This can also work true with your transition and your person as well. So even though it's on positive and we haven't even changed anything, they are more naturally are going to be more positive or more aggressive in their off the ball actions than they would be in balance. So on positive, they will trigger press slightly more often. They will be slightly more aggressive in their tackles. They are also also going to be slightly positioned higher off the ball as well. For the attacking width, we've set that to fairly narrow and what that is doing is now decreasing the spaces in between my players and the spaces that we have to play in. So if this system was fairly wide, the space between my left side of central midfielder and my uh, defensive midfielder will be fairly wide. If my left side of central midfielder tries to pass now to my central midfielder, that can be intercepted and boom, straight away a counter attack at my back line because there is no natural holding midfielder. Now, if I do decrease that attacking width, this lateral space is going to be a bit smaller. Therefore, that pass in theory to the center midfielder should be easier to make. Pass into space, we are using, but I do feel like pass into space, passing directness and tempo, they are all sort of linked. Passing the ball into space encourages players to make forward runs, but also to encourage the passer to then make that pass <laughs> into the path. Passing into space works well in combination with a quick tempo. Not only are you trying to move the ball from back to front quickly, but you're also asking the players to play riskier passes into space when trying to break down the opposition. Passing into space and a slow tempo may not be good for this reason. If you want to play patiently, you will need more supporting players around the player in possession rather than encouraging players to make forward runs. So now when it comes to using this instruction first I would actually sort out my passing directness and tempo first so in the system it will be passing directness shorter and then tempo slightly higher. So what we are doing is saying hey with the passing directness you don't have to be overly risky and play in those longer distances but what I do want from you is to play with a very very high tempo trying to play from back to front quickly and now I want to increase that risk 
by passing the ball into space now it makes sense if i wanted to use a slower tempo me now passing into space if i'm looking at this i wouldn't be thinking now this makes sense to get players further forward but i do want players further forward so we are going to operate with a higher tempo and then also encourage those forward runs and forward passes and we can sort of see what this passing risk is doing in the match engine so we have this goal against Monza, a 6-1 win away from home. Now we've got Edison on the ball. He's kind of have a couple choices. He can play it back to the centre back or he can play it to the left back, which is kind of the safer passes. And also it's sort of backwards. So we're not going from back to front very quickly, but I do have that instruction on. So he should be looking further forward. And this is where he makes that risky pass. This pass here is a very risky pass because it's trying or attempting to break not only one line, so the first line of pressure, but also the second line as well. And then boom, it goes into Darun. We do get a a bit fortunate falls to our right back he goes forward and drives that goal and again you sort of see it here edison picks up the ball and instead of playing it safe he's looking for a risky pass into i believe i don't know it looked like he looked for scar maca but the game did recognize that it was going to cdk so i'm going to say he played that risky pass into cdk and there we see that high turnover the, oh well a turnover not a high turnover there we see a turnover in possession we win the ball back again and then quickly it is a forward pass rather than going backwards we are going forward all about risk on the ball Devroon gets the ball forward pass risk again gets further forward Zappa Costa plays it into the box and then boom nice goal attacking through the middle is for our middle players to play with more meaning and purpose trying to break down teams centrally again adds more risk to those central players by focusing and more of our attacks through the middle there is a couple versions of this tactic as always the away version does come with play out from the fence and the home version doesn't now you would think this is sort of a risky option because you need good players to play out from the back but actually we're doing it to minimize the risk so as you can see we have no holding midfielder and now this means our deeper players have to play more riskier passes in getting the ball forward especially with our players positioned higher up because of that positive mentality so the central midfielder has a positive mentality he's going to have a positive positioning the cm however will drop to receive at home that is enough but away from home actually playing out from the back can make it a bit easier for us to progress as not only he drops but he drops and he will drop not all in the same line sometimes he might drop a bit further and then he might be a bit up here and then he might be lingering a bit round there so a bit staggered which of course is a good thing but the idea again is get those central midfielders to play deeper come back and try and not because if we do try if we do try and play out from the back and we do lose the ball with only one central midfielder like this away from home then again that could be trouble and we are good enough at home to not play without it and have those higher positions next is run out defense this is sort of self-explanatory but it does apply for all your players rather than just your attackers so your deeper players your center backs or your full backs when they do get the ball to progress with the ball they might not look for the pass they might just look to carry the ball themselves something that Salzburg did do a lot especially after winning the ball back in their transition so the right back will dribble a lot in trying to progress with the ball but then of course your attackers will then look to beat defenders in 1v1 situations more often moving into transition counter press and counter are again sort of instructions we kind of know or understand how they work but when you do lose the ball your team together will sort of hunt in a pack in an attempt to try and win the ball back now i'm not exactly sure of the rule in football manager how long that uh, momentary press is in real life if you are counter pressing you sort of want to win the ball back within that first five or six seconds before you have that uh, gradual drop off in football manager i'm not exactly sure how long it does last i don't know why i just don't watch it and time it I don't, just time it <laughs> but that is what counter press does now of course in a formation or a system like this this is only going to complement our aggressive nature of the ball whereas regroup it can actually cause a bit of trouble when you see the player roles you will sort of understand why so counter press and then when possession has been won we are going to counter attack we always want to be on the front foot we always want to get further or bodies further forward and attack so we are going to counter attack again complementing the system the goalkeeper 
this is sort of down to you. You can just choose what you want. You can distribute the ball to your playmaker, try and encourage your playmaker to drop even more to receive from the goalkeeper. You can play it to your centre back, taking short kicks, roll it out, whatever your strength is. But again, another tool that might complement this, especially in home games, is distribute the ball quickly. As again, it's just increasing the risk, increasing the tempo from your goalkeeper. Let's say you're playing that you're playing against a five at the back. They've just had your chance. Your goalkeeper's got the ball. If your goalkeeper now takes his time with the ball and just rolls it out slowly, the opposition can get back into the defensive shape. But if your goalkeeper claims it straight away and then looks to throw it out, distribute it quickly, you can then take advantage of the opposition's disorganized shape. Lastly, out of position. Now, with RB Salzburg and RB Leipzig, you will see the results. I did just use a much higher line. And if I'm totally honest, I didn't drop it. In those sort of, with those defenders at RB Leipzig and Salzburg, it sort of, again, complemented them well with their agility and their pace, apart from Pavlovich. But then again, in the Bundesliga, Salzburg are a very good side. Now, at Atalanta, I did drop this because the pace just wasn't the same. It wasn't the same compared to other teams in Serie A. So again, you can kind of tweak this, find out what is actually right for your team. And then the pressing trigger is going to be a much more often. Now with pressing trigger, some people just think it's okay just to change this in your system. And sometimes it's not. <laughs> So what I'm trying to say is if you've already set your roles up aggressively, so let's just say I've got an attacking or advanced forward, advanced forward, attacking midfielder. These guys here are always going to look to put pressure on, especially in a high press. Now, if I choose to reduce this press without even considering changing my roles, what can happen is these guys can just go pressing and then just leave a big space because now these guys that are on support ain't going to want to sort of travel too far from their position they want to support and cover those sort of lateral areas and up and behind them as well they're not going to want to press forward just like everybody else is especially on that attacking duty so trigger press in my opinion by the way this should be a disclaimer everything is in my opinion football manager haven't told me this and i don't know this factually not everything anyway but with trigger press for me certainly when i'm watching the game i notice if i am set up aggressively especially in my roles reducing this often does not help what does help if i start to then fall back you can go and defend you can stay on support attacking midfield you on support actually i'm going to use a deep line forward rather than a pressing forward so i want to keep my shape a little bit because this is what is keeping your shape the trigger press you are attempting to keep your shape if i use this or much more often now i want players to start leaving their shape again it might not work well with so many players on defensive duty because these guys want to protect their space if you've got this all the way up then certain players will be just bombing forward certain players will just be protecting their space <laughs> so for the completed project for the team instructions this is what it looks like everything we've gone through in transition this is what my distribution looked like and out of possession as well we do have step up more so on times on occasion we are looking to catch the opposition of side at atalanta when i dropped my defensive line i did also keep this still on Now we can look at the player roles and their instructions for the goalkeeper. We are using a sweeper keeper on the fen. The left back is a fullback on attack, running wide and staying more narrow. The right back again is the same, but under away version, he will be on support, but with the same instructions. Now the ball playing defenders, are just ball playing defenders, no added information. The DLP, we are using the DLP on the fen. Now you can see that I'm using more direct passes because I want to increase his passing risk. Without this, he's on the fen, so his mentality has dropped to cautious therefore his pass skin risk has declined or dropped compared to everybody else in the team one way to increase that risk is by increasing the passing directness the left side of the central midfielder is taking more risk and the box to box midfielder is dribbling more running wider the ball getting further forward and staying wider the number 10 is an advanced playmaker on attack the right side of the striker pressing forward on support and the left side of the striker advanced forward on attack so not a lot of um player instructions just a couple of very carefully selected instructions as well when you're playing away against the big teams is basically the same as the away version but now the mentality has dropped to balance but do get a feel because your team might surprise you sometimes sometimes you can push this up for an example against um leverkusen 
Leverkusen. I thought Leverkusen was going to be a very difficult game. Actually, you can go on my Twitter. So last night on Twitter, I did record myself playing, record myself, jeez. <laughs> I did record myself playing against Leverkusen away from home. And in this game, I did start with that balanced mentality and it was nil-nil, but I did find that we were the better side and I did feel that we could push on and go and win this game. And when I mean by the better side, if you do watch the mentality, uh, the mentality, the momentum, you can see the momentum was going for RB Leipzig. So I thought, why not just push my mentality forward? So at halftime, it is nil-nil. I'll go into my tactics. I'm changing now from balanced to positive. There we go. Go into the game now and then we end up winning this game 2-1 but you can see there statistically as well we absolutely battered Leverkusen away from home so in game if you do have that feel that oh we can push for this then try and push for it and lastly there was one formation one system in this game that was just constantly giving me a headache and it was the diamond tactic so I decided to create a system which was kind of against the diamond tactic which is sort of funny given our formation itself is sort of a diamond but now we are hitting early crosses we're not playing that from the back but we are are hitting early crosses which i felt for some odd reason just that little simple fix there and never playing out from the back whether you're home or away just never playing out from the back i thought this just then decided to dominate against the diamond teams so that does wrap up the tactic but now we can see the results that we got with this system At Salzburg, absolutely dominated the admired rule Bundesliga, playing 32, winning 29, drawing 2, losing 1, meaning we've got a win rate of 91%, and winning 29 of 32 games is absolutely unreal. We did get knocked out on the round of 16 by Barcelona in the Champions League, but we did overachieve just get into the knockout stages in the Champions League and we were the runners up in the cup as well losing to Rapid VM but honestly I just rotated my teams heavily in that competition Rocco Simic with the top goal scorer the average rating I mean just look at that 15 of the top average rated players are all Salzburg players absolutely madness we did score 91 goals fewest conceded most dribbles made statistically absolutely dominated the league leipzig results for me were better as they are sort of predicted third or fourth i can't remember but we did again win the league absolutely dominated the league by the way winning it by 15 points in the champions league we got knocked out in the semi-final by barcelona so again a very good performance i don't know why my performance is at 50 percent they wanted to get to the round of 16 we got to the champions league semi-final we did get battered over two legs though in the <laughs> in the pocket we got knocked out in the quarter final again rotating and we were the runners up in the super Copa. scored the most goals again statistically dominating apart from the possession though we are in fourth place completing the most dribbles the joint most clean sheets and the fewest conceded goals louis appenda and chesco as the two top goal scorers and looking at the average rating again the players seem to love this system now with atalanta i didn't actually complete the system i was only doing this mini test because someone on the internet decided to be one of those donuts oh you need to test it with a different team oh you need this oh you need that you need to show us which is also the reason why i recorded those clips and posted it on twitter just to show you mate just play the games figure it out and you will win sort of vibes so i don't actually i'm not sure should we play a game should we play a game? Look at the average rating. Again, Atalanta players, even they love this system. Should we play a game? Okay, let's play the game. Let's play a game. So for those who don't want to stay that long and watch a game, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video and also breaking down some of the instructions on why they are working in the match. Oh, just why they're working in the system, not necessarily in the match engine, but with the system. And there is a reason why you will see many downloadable tactics with this combination of pass into space and high tempo with short wrists because it sort of meant to work that way. So now let's play Udinese away. Also looking at the dynamics. I mean, the team's morale is not even that great because half the team actually want to leave. But we are going to play this Udinese game away from home. And we are going to use the away version, of course. And like I said earlier with Atalanta, I did find that dropping actually the defense line helped this side. I mean, especially if you want to play man like Saeed Kolasin at centre back. But <laughs> let's play this game. I also just noticed as well, the two strikers, I mean, our two actual main strikers, aren't there as well so Scar Maka and Lookman 
and um, Elbib Traore, who's actually got six goals and seven stars. So we're actually missing a lot of players here as well. You know what? For that, I'm actually going to do some risk balancing. So I'm going to drop this to balance and I'm going to shift my defensive line up as well. Also, make sure replays is on because that wasn't on last time I played the game in Football Manager. So first 15 minutes, nothing has really happened though. The match momentum at the moment is all for Atalanta. So again, that might be a little cue to push our mentality up a little bit. Here's Louis Mori. Oh, Edison's on the ball. Play the free ball. No, he's going to shoot. Yes. Oh, it's a goal! What a goal! He just drives through. Now, sometimes when the player just drives through like that, he just shoots it long and hits it over the bar, but not... Whoa, 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 whoa. Referee. Why is that so fast? How do I slow that down? My God goodness where are you going chased just what a god it's still going super fast it's still going super fast i've just changed the speed so this one is a bit of a boring half bit of a boring half here his upper costa over the throw the rune cooper miners ah oh, he's going for a long one there yeah very annoying long shots so that was a bit of a boring half admittedly it is one nil to us though now we are going to boost this to positive i thought we can do a little bit more we could do a little bit more and a little bit better let's hit early crosses as well sometimes we get the ball in those by the areas and we don't really do much with it we do have two strikers in that box that we can try and aim for we do have a corner here's ruggery with a corner CDK, Ruggery, Cooper Miners, Raphael Toloi. The centre back smashes it into the back of the net for his first goal of the season, which is quite surprising given how strong set pieces tend to be. On, I don't know why the replays are so fast, but here is a throw in. For, oh! <laughs> intercepted what a silly throw that was Louis Morial CDK now it looks like Atlanta are absolutely ready now here's uh, Martin Darun pushing further forward can we put the ball into the box I was just stalling to put the ball in the box even though I got hit early crosses come on lads put the ball into the box man there we are cross now whip it gee why, why are we taking so long to cross the ball here's Saeed Krosnak cross the ball Whips it in. That's my centre back, by the way. Mario Pasalic now with a goal. It's now 3 0 to Atalanta away against Udinese. I mean, the, uh, the, the early crossing thing is a bit bugging me. They do have time or space, I should say, to be hitting that early cross. And they just sometimes opt to not do it. I don't know why they just don't do it. Maybe we need a target forward in that box, but it is now 3-0. Now, what I want to do, actually, is change you into a CDM rather than a deep line playmaker in midfield. Kind of just try and shore up that midfield a little bit more. I do want to get this clean sheet as well away from home. I do like the possession numbers as well. We are seeing 63% of the ball. Look, the momentum is now swang. Udinese are just going to have all the chances now. In the last minute, they've just thrown everyone forward. Ah, oh, this game just does not like clean sheets, man. It's really annoying. <laughs> it really is annoying. They don't, I, look, they haven't created any good chances, but for some odd reason, they will just have no issues at scoring goals man oh that is so annoying that that really has actually just ruined the whole video for me i can't lie to you man oh my god why does the game always the amount of times it has done that through the season though where a team has absolutely nothing in a game and then we'll just throw bodies forward and bang goal straight away but that there wraps up today's video that goal that conceded goal has annoyed me a lot i will see you guys soon stay safe and god bless